From the earth, the sun is the nearest star and the moon is the nearest celestial body. Many of the biotic and abiotic processes on the earth are influenced by these two celestial bodies. Our life depends on the energy we get from the sun. Sunlight is the visible manifestation of solar energy. At night, when the sun is not there in the sky, the moon reflects the sun's light onto the earth. This is what we call moonlight. The moon is the only satellite of the earth. The motions of the moon. The moon while spinning around its axis revolves around the earth. This means that like the earth, the moon also has two motions, namely the axial and orbital motions. The earth also spins around its axis and revolves around the sun. As a result, though the moon does not revolve around the sun independently, it indirectly keeps revolving around the sun. The moon's axial motion is quite slow as compared to that of the earth. The earth completes its rotation within one day whereas the moon takes 27 and a half days to complete its rotation. However, in almost the same period, it completes its revolution around the earth. As the axial and orbital motions of the moon are the same, one side of the moon always remains towards the earth and hence the other side never becomes visible from the earth. As the moon revolves around the earth, the earth is also revolving around the sun. Hence, during a period of 27 and a half days, the earth moves ahead along its orbital path. Therefore, the moon has to travel more distance to complete its revolution around the earth. Hence, one revolution of the moon around the earth takes 29 and a half days. The moon's orbit around the earth is elliptical in shape. Therefore, its distance from the earth is not the same everywhere in its orbital path. A position when the moon is along the orbit farthest from the earth is called apogee and that when it is nearest is called perigee. Effects of the moon's motions, phases of the moon and measurement of time. As a result of the moon's revolution around the earth in 29 and a half days, the position of the moon keeps on changing every day. Half of the moon's portion is illuminated by the sun and the other half remains dark. However, only some part of this illuminated portion of the moon can be seen from the earth due to the moon's motion along its orbit. This visible part of the illuminated portion keeps increasing or decreasing. The night when the portion of the moon facing earth is completely illuminated, it is called full moon night or Purnima. On this occasion, the moon disk appears as a full circle. From full moon day, the illuminated portion of the moon starts decreasing day by day until one of the nights when the moon disk totally disappears from the sky. This is called new moon night or Amavasya. The changing shapes of the moon are called phases of the moon. In the period from new moon to full moon, the illuminated portion of the moon keeps on increasing. This is called Shukla Paksh. From full moon towards the new moon, the illuminated portion of the moon decreases progressively. This period is called Krishna Paksh. The duration of each of these periods is of 15 days. Each period is called a fortnight. Shukla Paksh is the fortnight of the waxing moon and Krishna Paksh is the fortnight of the warning moon. Two fortnights added up to a month. This is called a lunar month. Thus, due to the revolution of the moon around the earth, we have got month as a unit of time measurement. Eclipses the relative positions of the sun, the moon and the earth on the new moon, full moon and the quarter moon days are shown in this image. Observe the lines joining the earth and the moon as well as those joining the earth and the sun. 
Note the angles that these lines make at the earth. On a quarter moon day, the two lines are perpendicular to each other. On the new moon day, the angle is 0 degrees, whereas on the full moon day, it is 180 degrees. The orbital path of the earth around the sun and that of the moon around the earth are not in the same plane. They intersect each other and make an angle of approximately 5 degrees. As a result, the positions as described above do not occur on each full moon and new moon days and hence the eclipses do not occur on each new moon and full moon days. However, on some new moon or full moon days, the sun, the moon and the earth fall in a straight line. Eclipses occur only on such occasions. Solar Eclipses Look at this image. It shows the shadow of the moon falling on the earth when it comes between the earth and the sun. The shadow is of two types. In some part it is dense while in the other parts it is sparse. The dense shadow is called umbra and the sparse shadow is called penumbra. From the region of the earth which comes under the dark shadow or umbra, the sun becomes invisible. Such a situation is called a total solar eclipse. From the region of the penumbra, the sun appears to have been partially covered. This is called a partial solar eclipse. Total solar eclipse is seen from a highly restricted area though the situation may occur frequently. However, a partial eclipse can be observed at the same time from the region under penumbra. The region from which a total solar eclipse can be seen is shown by A in this image. B in the image indicates the region from which partial solar eclipse can be seen. Note that from the region marked as C, the solar eclipse will not be visible. At times, when the moon is too far from the earth, that is, in apogee position, the shadow of the moon does not reach the earth and ends up in space itself. Under such a situation, an edge of the sun disk remains visible. It appears like a ring. Hence, it is called annular solar eclipse. However, an annular solar eclipse is a rare event. Lunar Eclipses On a full moon day, if the sun, the earth and the moon fall in a straight line, the orbital path of the moon passes through the umbra of the earth. As a result, the moon becomes invisible. This situation is called as total lunar eclipse. However, if the moon passes through penumbra, part of the shadow of the earth appears on the moon disk. This is called partial lunar eclipse. The solar or lunar eclipses are just simple astronomical events. There is nothing inauspicious or auspicious about the eclipse. It is only a result of the sun, moon and the earth falling into a particular position. These situations do not occur frequently and hence they arouse some curiosity in the minds of people. For astronomers, the eclipses, particularly the total and annular solar eclipses, are rare opportunities. Scientists from all over the world visit places where they occur and carry out observations in order to study the conditions during the eclipses.